DCEPR is setting up a new program area called Political Economy. But what do the organisers want to achieve and who would they like to work with to achieve it? So Helios, hello again. Hello, hello Tim. Great to be here. Yeah, yeah. and Ronnie, welcome back. Hi Tim. Nice to talk to you again. Now, uh, Helio, stop me off. Last week, we were talking about how the CEPR is creating a program area for political economy now. So as what sort of economists do you hope are going to get involved with that? Well, yeah, so we created this group uh, as an interim group that now it's going to become a proper program in CPR. And so I think we're going to, you know, fish out uh, all the... Um, the people that are, uh, you know, the jure are more likely de facto political economists, but are often under the disguise of other fields because of what we were talking about last week, because, you know, uh, political economy is not yet a, although it's becoming and we're working on it, a legit field. So, uh, you know, people will be coming from economic theory, macroeconomics, development, a lot from public finance, some from experimental economics too. And so, yeah, it's going to be a big, uh, you know, um, carnival of, of people from all over. And that's a little bit also what the field of uh, political economy is, yeah. frankly. It sort of uh, branches out into all these fields because politics kind of touches on a lot of these aspects of macro and microeconomics. And what sort of research, Ronnie, would you like to see? Is it going to be theory? Is it going to be empirical? What sorts of things? Yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent question. And, and I think that last week we touched a little bit upon this, that I think what I like about going to political economy conferences is that you still see a mix of papers, some theory and some empirical. And, you know, that's a rarity these days within economics where we're so specialized and either all the papers are empirical or all the papers are theoretical. Uh, so when you go to a political economy conference, you have everything. You have experiments, you have kind of development, empirical work that you kind of likely see in development. Uh, you see, you have kind of the macro political economy models, you have the micro. So basically you have everything there. And I, I, I don't want to lose that. So I think I want this group to uh, sustain this kind of melting pot of different methodologies and different ways to view. And also, to add to that, if we can, political scientists, which are kind of missing within the CPR. Um, so the type of research, I think, ideally should be focused on the big questions right now, which are what's happening to democracies uh, in the world, understanding all these trends that we saw in the last 10, 20 years in terms of populism, in terms of the relationship between politics and economics, both ways, how economics affects politics and how politics affect uh, economics. So I would really want to see research that tries to kind of rethink the way we think about uh, the relationship between politics and economics in the prism of what's happening in, in the last uh, decade or two. Yeah, and as you mentioned, there are a whole bunch of political scientists who are not just outside the CEPR, but they also tend to publish in different journals, not in the traditional economics journals. Are you hoping to bring them in as well and make links with them? Absolutely. Um, in fact, um, we are creating a, an executive committee within the CPR new program that I'll be directing. And I have uh, I asked some um, political economists to join precisely for that reason, um, so that they can bring in a lot of the uh, political scientists and, and feel them welcome. And because a lot of the, um, you know, the, the scope of um, the objective of this group is to grow political economy in an organic kind of a grassroots way where different initiatives are sparked in different, you know, uh, parts of Europe and in different departments and different types of researchers. And in political science, there is, they have a different style uh, a lot, but there's a growing a minority that has similar um, or the same type of uh, quantitative rigor that economists have and we speak the same language and so um, you know whereas a lot of political science are different in the sense you know they don't write academic papers they write books 
it's, it's very different to write a book than an academic paper and it's about and so but many are you know quantitative in nature and they're what you know uh, they call the formal theorist or the political economist there and so and we are we are hoping to bring them in and to to give a home to them too because they also feel within the department their departments within political science that they are a minority and some somehow uh, you know not not um, central to the department ronnie i mean it is one of the criticisms you often hear from economists about other social sciences it's not rigorous enough it's all correlation there's no causal effects being identified here is that fair are we are you gonna help improve the quality of that research does it need improving again we have to look back uh, in time and i think that it's a very interesting thing to look at what happened in the field of political science in the last 50 years uh Initially, there was this spur of people who were kind of doing formal modeling in political science, uh, and they got some headway in the beginning, but then that, that created a backlash from political science against them. So if you look at kind of political science departments, even these days, they're very split, uh, and there's bitter fights between different parts in the department, the formal ones and the, the ones that, the, 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 you know, political theory and other kinds of forms of, of politics, comparative politics. Uh, this is becoming a bit better. I mean, if you, if you look back 10, 15 years ago, that was really better. And you can see it in terms of how journals were kind of, there were uh, basically revolutions in journals and hijacking of journals and all kinds of dramatic stories happening there. But in some sense, the criticism, and there's some good books about that, uh, like the book by Green about criticizing political science, uh, the formal side of political science, because in, in the beginning, as I talked about last week, uh, it was very theoretical and even too much in the sense that the types of things that people were working on were not led by kind of the important questions, but more by how we can write down a fun mathematical model and solve it. Uh, and so that criticism to some degree was warranted and any empirical work that existed, if you go back 30, 40, 20 years ago, it was not the kind of work that we as economists would accept in terms of the rigor. Uh, but that is really, really changing. And in the last 10 years, and you just can see it. And uh, I think now we're at the point where the empirical part of political economy is strong enough that we could really, as Helia says, have like meaningful conversations. Um, on top of that, I would say that we shouldn't let go of the other part of political science, which doesn't talk our language because there's so much to learn from it. The conversation is much harder because we don't use kind of the same methodology, but we can and we should learn a lot from them as well. Uh, so, you know, some colleagues, some economists look down and those kinds of qualitative research methods. And, but I think there's a lot to be gained. And, and I think the real challenge is to strike a balance because it's very hard to hold conversations between two fields in social sciences that really don't share a lot of the methodology. Elios, politics and policy go together. Uh, are you hoping to have more of an influence on policy with this program area? Well, definitely, definitely. And that's one of the idea of the group. And that's one of the, you know, uh, mandates of CPR as well. And so, and so we hope that through this, uh, creating this multidisciplinary group and embracing political science into the mix that we, uh, as we decided to do and as we're doing, uh, will help in that, in that respect. And so the only thing, the next step is in fact, to see how to involve uh, uh, policymakers uh, together with economists and political scientists. Uh, so we haven't, um, you know, the group is still has to be launched. So we're we're working on that right now. But as soon as it'll be official, will uh, that will be one of the main priorities that we'll have. So if I'm uh, watching this and I'm thinking, I really want to get in touch with this. This seems pretty interesting. What should I be doing about it now? I get in touch with us, with me or Ronnie, or um, as soon as the group is formed to anybody in the executive uh, committee of the group. And because uh, that's what we do. We're, uh, you know, an umbrella that's trying to gather all, all sorts of, uh, of initiative around Europe and, uh, and let them grow 
uh, by themselves by giving them the CPR uh, a seal of uh, you know of um, and its prestige um, if that is um, is useful. I think also a good end would be to join kind of uh, we set up this uh, political economy webinar. Uh, when the pandemic started and it's hugely successful and we had some great talks they're always recorded and if uh, anybody who's interested visits our website can see some of the people talking and can join and join the, the webinars which you know are open to all and recommended well good luck in with uh, the new group and i hope you get lots of people interested for all of the rest of you you know what to do get in touch with Ronnie and Helios. But uh, Ronnie and Helios, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dan. So Pleasure to be here. Use this link to find out more about political economy at CEPR and keep checking back for more information about our new program area.